This story takes place back in 1986. This story is 100% true and it's the only true crime story that I've ever heard that has made my skin crawl. Welcome back to another episode of Candlelight Crimes Halloween Spooky Edition. So, back in 1986, Annie Andrews had been talking to a boy named Danny on the phone. And they had never met before, um, so she started just to get to know his personality, and from their conversations, she became interested in meeting him. So they went downtown to go get ice cream and Annie was very surprised with how her date Danny appeared. He was nothing like he had described himself to be on the phone, so um, he, I believe, was shorter, um, his hair was greasier, um, he had acne. And just wasn't what she was expecting. So, um, they continue um, the date despite her disappointment. They go downtown um, for some ice cream where she confides in him that her mother has recently passed away from cancer in the past few months. And he, uh, made a, an offhand, distasteful comment that really didn't sit well with her, it didn't show any empathy. So after about an hour, she makes up an excuse that she needs to go, and she uh, goes home and never returns any of his phone calls. So uh, after that, Annie never speaks to um, her date, Danny, again. So, um, as I said before, Annie's mother had passed away, so now her father, Brian, is a single parent to her and her younger sister, Jessica, um, and he often works nights um, and long hours, which means the girls are often home alone. So during one of these nights, um, the girls begin to um, do a seance in the hopes of being able to connect with their recently deceased mother, um, which is just so heartbreaking um, that, you know, obviously they were missing her and it's just a really tough time. Um, nothing out of the ordinary happens during this seance. Um, but their father isn't happy that they're, they're doing this, or that they did this. Um, but shortly after, there begins to be some very strange things that would happen. So when the girls would be home alone, their father would be out, they'd be watching TV, and... would be knocking coming from all over the house. So after this happens, um, they tell their father and he's concerned that um, it's an overactive imagination and a coping mechanism um, for their grieving. So these things continue and the girls, you know, they don't really have the support of their father um, in concerns with the, the sounds. Um, other than that, he's a good father. Um, but in the first few months of 1987, um, the girls find some writing on the wall that's in red, so they assume it's blood. And they also hear some And 
and they go out um, into the basement where they think they hear it and it in the on the wall in red it says I'm in your room come find me the girls run to a neighbor's house and their father's called home from work so their father Brian enters the house to look around he climbs the staircase slowly to find more writing in what appears to be blood marry me it said standing there facing away from him is a figure with long blonde hair the figure is wearing his deceased wife's wedding dress the figure is holding a hatchet when they hear Brian the figure turns around and their face is completely painted and standing there in his wife's wedding dress was Danny LaPlante which was Annie's date from last year a fight ensues between the two uh, but Brian is able to escape the police are called and they search the home and at first they don't see anything but they notice a bookshelf seems to be uh, pushed in a strange way they move it and find a hidden door where Danny was hiding and they discover he had been living in their home for weeks he had created peepholes to be able to know when the father was out and the girls were alone. That's how he's able to move through the house because he knows where they're, where they are in the house. He's able to create those different knocking sounds and able to write on the walls when they're actually in the home. Um, the police do take him into custody where he does serve some time in a juvenile detention um, it was found out that Danny um, you know unfortunately had been abused um, by more than one person as a child um, and that led him to have strange behavior that made him feel very isolated um, nothing nothing excuses his behavior but you can see why perhaps mental health issues did come about so that is the story that I have for you today. Again, that is 100% true. Um, and um, it's just an incredibly creepy, creepy story. So on that note, I am going to go. Tomorrow is Halloween. And I hope you have a happy Halloween.